Coming to you live from Mexico City, Mexico, Matchroom USA and DAZN proudly present World Championship Boxing. And what a night it's going to be. Not one, not two, but three world title fights, six fights in all. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Otha Jones the third, OJ3, 5-0 and with two knockouts. He's only 20 years old, 5'7". He's three inches taller than Kevin Montiel Mendoza, who's also undefeated and young as well, 21 years old, with a reach of 67 inches. This is scheduled for six rounds in the super featherweight division. Well, Jones, the quote I heard was, I didn't come here not to fight. So he would have fought anyone short of basically Mike Tyson <laughs> walked in and weighed in on that scale. So kudos to him. And right now, both men trying to feel each other out, although they are opening up a bit with some wide right hands. Good left hook right there by Mendoza catching Otho with his uh, chin in the air. Still waiting to see someone get a big clean shot to land. Good body shot right there by Mendoza. Oh, and a nice left right across the jaw. That hook from Jones. Yeah, Jones pivot out of that corner right there and landed some good shots. I'd like to see Jones see if he can come forward. Right now we've, we've been seeing him box off the back foot. I'd like to see if, uh, if he can back up Mendoza. Some, some fighters can only fight going forward. Oh, nice left hook in that exchange for Mendoza. Overhand right as well. OJ needs to tuck that chin, and I'm telling you, he's a little bit too comfortable right now trying to, you know, backpedal and counter, but his chin is in the air. Round five of six here. Good body shot there from Mendoza. Look at how smooth OJ3 is punching away from the... Now, now he's firing on all cylinders. Look at how smooth he was punching, looking for those uppercuts and left hooks, and he pivoted out nicely. Boy, he has not stopped and been stationary at all. And smothering the attack of Mendoza right there, which is what you got to do. Because they will keep punching at your gloves and your elbows and your shoulders and get comfort, comfort there. Don't give them nothing. Mendoza temporarily turned southpaw as well, landing some, some jabs from that left-handed stance. Both these fighters switching back and forth. Mendoza trying to finish strong. Let's, and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Después de seis rounds de combate, tenemos la decisión de los jueces. El juez, Judge Luis Medina, he scores it 58 to 56, 58 a 56, a favor, in favor of Otha. Judge Abraham Ibarra, he scores it 57, 57, even, 57, 57. And Judge Patricia Flores, she scores it 58 to 56, 58 a 56. In favor of Kevin Montiel. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a draw. Tenemos un empate. Well, there you go, Sergio. There you go, the Todd. Least, the least dramatic ring announcer in the history of the world has <laughs> declared this fight a draw. I agree. It was uh, <laughs> no energy, low energy right there. Low energy empate. Let's move now to our second fight of the night from Mexico City. And it's our tale of the tape. Ammo, Austin Williams, 24 years old. He is six foot tall, taking on a Sao Herrera, who is two inches shorter. And look at the reach advantage for Williams, a full seven inches in this six rounder from the super featherweight division. Oh, nice. nice straight left hand, and that affected Herrera. The first punch of the fight, ladies and gentlemen. But like I was just gonna say, he's a patient puncher as well, big patient puncher from that southpaw angle and with a 78 inch reach that's that's incredible i'm calling a first or second round ko just based off the first punch of the fight we saw good shot. The body there yeah oh herrera turned his back on his opponent and nearly paid the price i like that by williams the referee didn't break you up you can keep punching. 
Protect yourself at all time. There it is again. And again, you can see Herrera complaining to the referee, and the ref finally says, just fight, man. Never look to the referee to help you. The referee's not there to do that. If you get hit low, you, you go and do the same thing. That's the way fighters are trained. Good shot right there. Not a lot behind it, though. Yeah, but it, it came from a nice angle, though. You know, whenever, you, when you, whenever you're a, a southpaw and you step back and you can throw that left, that straight left hand from that angle right there, usually Ooh, that your opponents don't see him hand coming that like buckled that. Buckled the knees of Herrera, who, to his credit, refused to go down there. Oh, <laughs> Ooh is right. He's ready to go, Ammo. And let's see if he can load up. How is Herrera still standing? <laughs> I've never seen a fighter react like that. He he said woo out loud, <laughs> and he wanted to turn his back again, but he's oh, ready to quick quit. left hand, and that's going to be it. The referee stops it as Austin Ammo Williams gets his fifth professional KO. He wanted to be spectacular, and that was a spectacular finish right there. TKO victory. Subvencido por la vía del knockout técnico. From Houston, Texas, USA. Austin Ambo Williams. Here's our next fight. We go to the tail of the tape, and it's the return of Diego Pacheco. What a talent he is, and that size is causing everyone problems. Six foot four, ladies and gentlemen. He will have a five inch height advantage and a seven inch reach advantage. I believe those numbers might. No, they're wrong. These are those wrong? wrong? Yeah, yeah they're, they they're backwards. There's they no way be. Pacheco is, yeah, he's got a seven inch reach advantage over Juan Antonio Mendez. Now you were usually the taller fighter in your, your bouts, but when you were the smaller guy, you embraced that, did you no, not? No, I love fighting taller fighters. I mean, I, I really, really ex wanted the uh, fighters to be taller than me, but that's hard to do when I was at six foot. But, you know, Pacheco for being so tall, he's already adapted to fighting small. You know, he bends his knees well. He doesn't he doesn't stand right up every time he's done punching. See, some tall fighters get Boy, lazy up, whenever they're fighting the, behind jabs the like that. The uppercut again, and that's it. They will just wave it off. The uppercut by Pacheco did the job tonight as he improves to 10-0 with eight KOs. And that was a smooth uppercut right there. Pacheco stepped back and timed it perfectly on the chin of Mendez. So here we go, our tale of the tape. El Rey, Julio Cesar Martinez, 25 years old. He's an inch shorter than Cayeros, but look at the reach advantage for Moises. Six inches. Oh, a for nice Cayetos. left hand, and he caught him early. He caught him early. Cayeros, did he touch the canvas? Yes, he did. What a start for El Rey. No warm up needed. For Martinez and Cairos in a world of trouble a minute into this championship bout. Martinez should jump on him right now. Cairos got hit early, got hurt early. Let's see what kind of closer Martinez is. He knows it's a 12 round fight. How aggressive will he be here? When you get caught that early, the cobwebs aren't out that much. So oh, a straight right affected him as well. Martinez should jump on him right now. Don't let him revive. Don't let him get his legs under him again. Oh, a big leaping left hook, and back to the ropes goes Cairos again. Every shot was hard right there, and he didn't fall off balance. Martinez with excellent balance right there in that combination. Right there, you've seen him turn southpaw. Got him again. Does he have one final flurry in before the end of the first round? That will do it, but what a start for Julio Cesar Martinez. Oh, a big left hook. You could see the sweat shoot off the head of Cairos. What heavy punching power from this 112 pounder. He's just moving him all over the ring. 
and the punch selection that Martinez has, it comes from every angle, from left uppercuts to right, left hooks, right hooks, and then he gets an angle on top of that. Martinez is making Cairos look like an amateur. Big body shot. We haven't seen many jabs from him, but when he lands them, he jolts the head back of Cairos. Look, power oh, jabs. And every time Cairos throws a punch, he's left open, and Martinez is going to finish the show right here. And that's it. What a performance by Julio Cesar Martinez, who looked like the king tonight. He sigue haciendo el rey. I'm telling you, that was a performance right there. Julio Cesar. Andre Martinez. Nicaragua's own Chocolatito Gonzalez, 33 years old, five foot three, 114 pounds. Gonzalez, Israel Gonzalez, three inches taller, Sergio, and will have a seven inch reach advantage. And that's the reason I tell you that. Chocolatito needs to get on the inside. And the jab is going to be a key as he's fighting off the ropes. Nice uppercut there from Gonzalez. No, he's doing really well fighting backwards. Israel Gonzalez is. It's going to be hard for Chocolatito to get on the inside if he's going to be dealing with that kind of one-twos from Gonzalez. And you could see Chocolatito had no interest in getting tied up there. He wants to keep those hands moving. And a left hook there from Chocolatito. They are letting their fists fly here in the second round. And that's what Chocolatito does well. He knows how to break opponents in half. Started upstairs and then he goes downstairs, dissecting them in the body in half. Look at that combination. Nice little five or six punch sequence. And he's doing it with speed, not power. That's exactly what Israel Gonzalez's corner wants. Combinations with speed. And stay off the ropes. I was gonna say, he's getting a little too comfortable there and Chocolatito makes him pay with that. And another right hand there. See, timing beats speed, Todd. So right now, the timing of Chocolatito, especially if Israel Gonzalez stays still or against the ropes, that's going to be crucial for Chocolatito to land big shots, just like that. A good closing 20 or 30 seconds for Chocolatito may have swung that round back in his favor. I like that jab downstairs by Israel Gonzalez. Constant head movement and staying off the ropes is what's going to be crucial for Israel Gonzalez. I don't know if... Israel Gonzalez stumbled there, or if Chocolatito caught him with something, or if he just was off balance. Here's what Chocolatito does his be best work, coming forward and getting angles on his opponent. Good start to the third round for Chocolatito, whose pressure has been unrelenting. And that's what makes him so great. That's what makes him Chocolatito. It's the pressure and how he shifts his angles so subtly to the left and to the right, nonstop with combinations. Either way, this fight has been outstanding through four rounds, and the fifth comes in like a hellfire as well. Israel Gonzalez has been scoring with the straight right hand. Chocolatito has been scoring with almost everything. See, that's what Israel Gonzalez needs to do. He can't stay in front of Chocolatito. He needs lateral movement and punching backwards. Behind the jab, keeping the distance. Easier said than done. Israel Gonzalez could not afford to stand and slug it out with Chocolatito. But considering that his game plan is not working with the sticking and moving, does he maybe say bite down on the mouthpiece like he's doing right now and, and he's scoring? And that's what I just said. You gotta mix it up. Right there he lands a clean right hand and those are solid shots by Israel Gonzalez. You're gonna have to mix it up with this legend. Is this Custer's last stand, so to speak? Gonzalez has been getting worked the past four rounds. See, this is where plan B and C come into play, Todd. If you can't outbox the legend, you gotta outfight him. It may be go for broke here for Israel Gonzalez. Go out on your shield. At this point, it's gonna be very tough for you to win a decision. Go, 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 go. 
And if you're Chocolatito, how aggressive are you looking for a knockout here with three rounds to go? Well, he's just going to continue doing what he's doing, and that's just being the aggressor, using force, not power, just constant being in his face, throwing punches from all angles. That's just wearing. That wears on you physically, obviously, but mentally, you have nowhere to hide. Just like that. See, he's just touching those gloves, Todd, just to dig down downstairs with that left hook. He's outworking a man 10 years his junior. See, this is where the fast oh, hands. Oh, right hand that connected for Israel Gonzalez. This is where the fast hands of Israel Gonzalez come into play. The shoe shines. That can give him some momentum if he just concentrates on speed and not power. I think a body shot from Chocolatito slowed him down there. This is a good run for Israel Gonzalez. Shoe shining, Chocolatito. He just doesn't have enough output, Sergio. No, he doesn't, but if he can if he can add up the spurts, he can maybe sway the judges to give him rounds. Israel Gonzalez may be good, Sergio, but he's not great. And you gotta be great to beat the legend that is Chocolatito, who defends his title in style, a vintage performance for the 33-year-old. El Chocolatito Gonzalez. Here's our tale of the tape for our main event of the evening, 40 and three, Juan Francisco Estrada. He is the WBC super lightweight champion. And you can see their statistics, Sergio, virtually identical. See a little sharp left hook, uh, hook right there. It's a check hook by Estrada. That's actually keeping Quadras in check. The aggression that we normally see of Carlos Quadras is in check right there by the counter punching. You know, in the build-up to this fight, Estrada was constantly talking about Chocolatito and how bad he wants that rematch and how bad he wants to beat him. Any chance he's looking past Quadras at all? No way. I don't think anybody has ever looked past Carlos Quadras. He's fought some of the best. He's never been stopped. He's been in there with Chocolatito the first time with Estrada. So run this side. I mean, he, he's fought the best of the best. Right now, Estrada, Gallo Estrada is looking a little bit. Oh, nice. Oh, and they put him down. An uppercut from Quadras sends Estrada down. Just when I was about to say Estrada is landing the more crisp combinations and the speed and the power with the poise, he gets dropped by a big left hook. And I believe it was a double left hook. Oh, nice left hook there from Estrada as he was moving backwards. And a big uppercut. Estrada getting the better of these exchanges now. Oh, and a right hand for Estrada. El Gallo stepping it up. Another one. Quadra seemingly unfazed. The brilliant counter punchy that we're no, used to seeing with Estrada's going out the window, it's turning into a war. That body shot hurt oh, Quadras. Cut for Estrada. And you can see the animation in the corner of Estrada. They want El Gallo to go for the finish here, and he connects again. Big left uppercut. It's it was all that, going wrong for Quadras. It was that Mexican liver shot. Estrada landed a beautiful left hook to the body. That started the onslaught. I think Estrada might have hurt Quadras to the body. Yeah, the body language does not look great for Quadras. It's the body shot. 
Quadras blocking the right side of his body. Might have been a left hook to the liver that Estrada landed. He's got the right hand dropped by his waist, Sergio. You're you see it. That's right. I see it. He sees it. If he could double up on that left side of the liver. Good flurry there for Quadras trying to win this round late. <laughs> if this is a quiet round, Sergio. Oh, down goes Quadras! Down goes Quadras! Both men have been down. Can Estrada knock Carlos Quadras out? No one has been able to do it. 2.42 to go here in round 11. El Gallo Estrada not forgetting about the body. Oh, and a big left again. Can Quadras dig deep one more time? He's on the outs. Quadras is struggling. He's hurt. It's those body shots that finally took effect. Caught him again. Estrada digging deep, but Quadras showing the heart of a champion, refusing to go, but he's down for a second time. Face first in the canvas. He's stumbling up. Oh boy, he does not look good. He does not look good. Good sneaky uppercut by Estrada, who's weathered the storm. Was that the last stand for Quadras? Under a minute to go here in the 11th. Oh, and he's getting, and that'll do it! Juan Francisco Estrada, the rooster, has stopped Carlos Quadras, and look what it means to him in his corner. I am lost for words, Todd. This was an unbelievable war of attrition between two Mexican greats. Great heart, great strength, and of course, great cojones as always. <laughs> what a battle here in Mexico City. Kudos to both these men. I said it earlier, I have a feeling this will be a trilogy down the line. And I have <laughs> nothing wow. I saw is gonna change my mind.